All right, so we're back at HQ. Here we have our modified knuckles. I went ahead and painted over the welds to protect it from rust. And here we have the new coilover bodies, which are going to be threaded into the modified knuckle at this point. Um, I already went ahead and did it on the passenger side, so you guys can see what the whole thing looks like. And at this point, we're really just missing the wheel bearing along with dust shield, caliper, and the brake rotor, which we're going to install once it's on the car. So this is going to make it a little bit more maneuverable and easier to install. So let's get started with the driver's side. There we go. Now some of you guys might be wondering what I am setting these to um, for adjustment purposes. Right now, honestly, I'm leaving everything fairly loose. Um, I threaded the bodies in all the way until they stopped, so I'm maximizing the usage of my threads. Um, technically, you could weld them a little bit different. If you're trying to go super low, you would obviously cut that tube a little bit shorter to leave more room for this whole body to thread in further. But I'm obviously not trying to be featured on stancenation.com, so I'm just trying to have a functional and nice and stiff adjustable ride height. So next up, we're ready now to install the lower ball joints of the control arm. A little tip that I wanted to show you guys is if you're pressing in the ball joints into the knuckle and you're having trouble because as you're tightening the bolts, the ball joint starts spinning, what you can do is you can use a jack to lightly press the ball joint into the knuckle and it'll help it stay steady while you're applying torque and uh, tightening the bolts or the nuts in this case um, on the ball joints. And then, as a reminder, the control arm is a 19 millimeter nut, and the steering end link is a 17 millimeter nut. And then, of course, make sure that you always torque your nuts and bolts to spec, and I always have all the torque specs in the description of the video. Next, we need to reattach the sway bar to the control arm. One of the things that I found very interesting is that Fortune Auto calls for you to use basically a screwdriver and a hammer to lock those adjusting lock collars into place. Um, they do not want you to use those wrenches. So I am going to use a screwdriver and a hammer as requested. Now before I install my brake rotors, I like to apply um, a little bit of anti-seize. It just makes it easier uh, down the road to take the rotors back off if you ever need to, which you will at the latest when you're doing brakes again on the car. And then of course we have our new little set screw or rotor holding on screw or just screw.
At this point, go ahead and unhook your brake caliper and you should have your two 19 millimeter bolts, which you can use to reattach it to the knuckle. All right guys, so the front is pretty much done. Um, everything's torqued to spec. Uh, surfaces that might be rusting over time have been treated with NICs. I'm sweating my butt off. It is 100 degrees here in Utah again, so just awful. Um, I've measured and on paper, the suspension is about the same height. Obviously there could be variances in the chassis if anything's tweaked or if the subframe, et cetera, is tweaked. But on paper right now, the coilovers are set up the same way. Um, everything's preloaded. There's no play in the spring. And uh, I feel pretty good about the front. So at this point, I think we're ready for the back, for the installation, which is a lot easier than the front. Okay, so the concept for the rear, pretty straightforward. We have our spring with our adjustment sleeves. Everything, again, is measured and matches between the driver and the passenger side. Same thing on the shock. Um, everything pre-measured, everything's tightened down and ready to be installed. So we have our one 19 millimeter bolt here in the rear, which is actually still in the car. And we have our sway bar, which is gonna have to be reattached. And then while I'm in there, back here, I will be throwing on a garagistic tie down because I might have to trailer the car down to California for the show coming up. Um, they sent me these pretty cool tie downs that just attach between the shock, the rear trailing arm, uh, give you a point to tie down your car. Um, if you're on a dyno, if you're trailing the car or whatever, um, it's a good spot to safely tie down your car. So first things first, we're gonna install our spring or at least get it settled in there with the adjuster up towards the body. And then we're going to attach our lower shock mount, which by the way, you will be putting the bolt in and then you attach your tie down. And then this all threads into the lower knuckle or I don't know if you can see that on camera very well right there. Now, the reason why you put the tie down between uh, the actual shock mount and uh, the rear trailing arm or knuckle is because this is gonna be your most solid point. If you have it on the outside, you may risk twisting off uh, the shock bolt, this bolt that it's holding everything in. I mean, obviously it's gonna require an incredible amount of force, but it could happen. So this is a safer spot to have it. So just hand thread this in, uh, make sure it's aligned and adjusted with the other side. So a little bit of angle so that if you're pulling down or back, there's a little bit of angle uh, to accommodate that. And then at this point, we're gonna get um, the jack underneath the whole trailing arm and push everything up. Because right now, uh, the spring is just kinda hanging out loosely back here and we obviously wanna get everything up and tied down. Okay, so at this point, go ahead and hand thread on the nuts that are holding this top shock mount on. If you're unlucky like me and you have a touring, <laughs> again, you're gonna have to fiddle that little nut in through this whole weird rear construction. Luckily for you, if you have a two door or a sedan, it's very out in the open and very easy to access. And then once you got the nuts on, of course, torque them to spec. Okay, so I just got done. Reattaching my sway bar, um, I've torqued the bottom 19 millimeter bolt that is holding the shock in. And besides that, that's really all there is to it in the, in the rear suspension setup. I think it's time for the wheels and then to check whether or not we're somewhat even with our setup. And then we can take the car for a test drive.
All right, so there you have it. That is how you install coilovers on your E30. If you missed the previous videos, I'm gonna put links in the description so you can see how to remove the suspension, how to weld your knuckles, and then in this video, you saw how you install the coilovers on your car. Now, I'm pretty happy with the way the car sits. You guys should let me know by voting in the top left, I believe it's gonna be. Whether or not I should lower the rear a little bit, the front, there's absolutely no way I'm gonna make it any lower. I can already foresee um, I absolutely need a skid plate because the oil pan is about this far from the ground and I have no desire to crack my oil pan so a skid plate is in order and I really hate bottoming out cars so uh, the front is staying this way but let me know if the back should come a little bit lower. Um, it has somewhat somewhat of a raked look right now a little bit just just a hair. Um, it looks pretty aggressive but like I said let me know by voting. Um, yeah, so that's it. That kind of concludes this particular series. Um, if you guys were to be doing this on your car, the next step would be once you're happy with your ride height is to get the car lined, absolutely necessary. Uh, I'm still gonna be messing around with the ride height a little bit and on top of that, I just remembered, I don't have keys for the car anymore because the keys got stolen. So if you guys watched uh, one of our previous videos when I talked about how my tools and my keys got stolen, I've been buying more and more tools as you can see because I used some to install the coilers today. So there you go, like, share, subscribe. It always helps me out a ton and I hope to see you guys around in the next videos. Um, I got a ton of buttoning up to do in the car, got the headlights to install. Um, I have a video on the sports seats that I installed which you can kind of see a little bit maybe if you peek through the window right there. Um, they're freaking phenomenal, I love them. So I can't wait to drive this car again. So stay tuned and I'll see you guys soon.